Hello Year 9, I hope you're doing okay. I'm sorry I can't be there with you today, but we are going to be continuing our score analysis of Bach's Air. So we will be looking at that in the front of your books in just a moment. However, first things first, we need to do a do now in the back of our books. So as soon as you have your book, turn to the back of your book. I repeat, the back of your book and put today's date. And as soon as you've done that, you need to write the heading for your do now, which is do now E flat major scale. This is in the back of your book. OK, so your first task, very simply, is to tell me what are the notes of the E flat major scale. We've done lots of practice on this. Shouldn't cause a problem. I'm going to give you a few moments to get that done. Have even given you a little clue there? We start on E flat, we finish on E flat, fill in the middle for me. This isn't something that we need to discuss because we've done lots of practice on it, so make sure you get this sorted. Just a minute more on that. OK, if you need any more time on that, I'll just ask your teacher to press, to press pause for a moment. Otherwise, I'm going to carry on. So, notes, E flat to E flat. Let's fill in the notes first. Just because we start on E flat doesn't change anything. We still just use our musical alphabet. So E flat, F, G, A, B, C, D, E flat. We'll add in our sharps and flats from there. So we've got the skeleton that we need. Now we need to know our system, which is... Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Everyone knows that one now. We should never forget that ever again in our lives. Right, I've given you a keyboard here to help us through. So, starting on E flat, our first move to the F, we're hoping it's going to be a tone. So let's count it out. One semitone, two semitones, that equals a tone. So we're happy that that move is exactly what it wants to be. F to G. One, two, good, that's a tone as well. G to A, now, one, two. That is two semitones. We want it to be only one, so we need to bring our A back down a semitone. So to bring the A down a semitone, we flatten it. It is an A flat. So A flat, now we need to move a tone to our next note. One, two, three semitones, that's a tone and a half. We've gone too far, we need to come back down a semitone. So that B, instead of being a B, is in fact a B flat. So from B flat to C, we want a tone. One, two, good, it's a tone, sorted. From C to D, one, two, that's a tone, good, good, good. From D to E flat, yes, it's a semitone. Everything else is good. 
Now, if you remember the mnemonics that we learned last time, we can do a double check on this because we're working in a flat key. So if we use the mnemonic, flats become easy after direct guidance, Charlie, we can check that E flat, flats become easy, should have one, two, three flats in it. So we've got E flat, A flat, and B flat. I know there's an E flat on the end, but it's the same as that E flat. So that is three flats. Happy that that is definitely the correct answer. Good work, well done. Moving on, still in the back of your books, we are now going to do our E flat major chord bank. This is exactly the same as what we've been doing in previous lessons. We may not have used the term chord bank before, but this is just building a triad from each note of the scale, okay? So remember, play one, miss one, play one, miss one, play one. Okay, so build those triads. I will give you a few minutes to do that now as well. If you do finish that before the time is up, then I want you to start labeling them as major and minor and double check that you've got them right. Let's give you a few moments to get that done. So remember your first triad is going to start on E flat and then you need three notes. Play one, miss one, play one, miss one, play one. And then our second triad will start on F. I'm going to give you another two minutes to complete that. If you have completed it, I want you checking that you've got the right major and minor triads. Remember, we should have first is major, second is minor, third is minor, fourth major, fifth major, sixth minor, seventh diminished. One minute remaining. It's very strange teaching you from here. I've got no idea if I need to raise my voice or not. I'm assuming you'll work in splendid silence for your teacher today so that I don't have to at any point raise my voice. Do 
Okay, let's get those green pens out and check what we've done. So, first triad. Obviously, we know starts on E flat. Let's just get them all up for you to check. So, E flat, G, B flat. Second is F, A flat, C. Third is G, B flat, D. Fourth, A flat, C, E flat. The fifth, B flat, D, F. Sixth, C, E flat, G. And the seventh, D, F, A flat. Make sure you got those right. Any mistakes you made, correct them with your green pen. And remember, you can always check by looking straight down the rows and make sure they follow your musical alphabet. So we should have E, F, G, A, B, C, D. G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Good, good. B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Good. Right. Very good. We are now going to put that into practice a little bit using our bark scores that we've been looking at. So turn now to the front of your books and we are going to continue our score analysis. So your allo for today is to identify some of the chords used in Bach's air. And can you please tell the person next to you which of our Dr. Smith elements we are looking at if we are talking about the chords being used. Is it D, dynamics? R, rhythm and tempo? Is it S, structure? T, texture? Wait, that's not right. M, melody. I, instrumentation. T, texture. Or H, harmony. I really hope you said harmony because that is the correct answer. Right, so we're going to be looking at the harmony in the piece today. But first things first, let's make sure we're still reading these scores really, really well. So look at your scores. I want you to choose which line you're going to follow. If you're still struggling a little bit with following the notes of the score, then I want you to choose either violin one or the continuo, the cello, because those are the ones that are slightly easier to follow. If you're finding it fairly easy, then I want you to look at those inner parts, violin two and viola and choose one of those to follow. Remember, we have a repeat. So here we go from the beginning. I will shout out when we get into that first time bar and repeat, but I won't be giving you too many clues the rest of the way. So you need to keep your finger on your score so you don't lose your place. Bar two. Here's the first time bar. And we repeat that to the beginning now. Second time bar. Okay, there we go. I hope most of you were following that. If there were quite a lot of you who struggled with that, then I'm just going to ask your teacher to just go back and so you can listen to that again and try again to really follow with your fingers where each note is. 
if you really are struggling then make sure you ask the person next to you if they're having a slightly easier time of it to help you out right let's get into this harmonic analysis then so harmony is the chords used can you please write that very neatly in the front of your books underneath your allo you should also have written today's day i hope i told you that so harmony is the chords used so we're going to identify the key this piece is written in by looking at the key signature at the beginning so the key signature is there where you can see those the collection of sharps or flats or not that are used at the beginning so there are two sharps in the key signature of this piece so we are going to use the mnemonic that we've learned for sharp keys to work out which major key this piece is written in so go down and enter by force charlie we're looking for the key with two sharps in so we're looking for the second word go down which lands us there in D major can you please label that if you haven't already done so as D major in your scores right in the front of your books you are going to create a chord bank for D major so first things first I want the notes of the D major scale so you can do this we've just done it in E flat so D to D and fill in all the blanks remember tone tone semitone tone 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 semitone but we already know that it's got two sharps in it so that should make our lives a little bit easier and then your next task is to fill in those triads and again if you complete this more quickly then I want you to start checking your triads by making sure that you've got a major on the first minor minor major major minor diminished okay I'll give you a few moments to get that done Again, this shouldn't be something you need to discuss with the people around you. We've had lots of practice at this. I imagine you've got the D major chord uh, scale written in your books somewhere anyway. So make sure you're working independently, please. Just another minute to get that done. Make sure you check your triads. Remember, we should have major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Right, let's get that first bit up on the screen for you. So the notes of the D major scale. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. Correct in a green pen if you made any mistakes, please.
if you now need to go through and correct any of your triads based on that, then please do so. I'll give you another 30-ish seconds. Okay, I think that should be plenty of time. If you are still working, then again, I'll ask your teacher to press pause there for a moment to let you catch up. But I think we should be there. Here we go then. First triad. In fact, let's just get them all up for you. So, D, F sharp, A, E, G, B, F sharp, A, C sharp, G, B, D, A, C sharp, E, B, D, F sharp, C sharp, E, G. Okay, that chord bank is going to be important to us now. So make sure you've got that all correct. Any corrections done in green. Just another moment for you to check it. Okay, now we need to turn back to our scores and start seeing how these chords are being used. Important when we are looking at the chords being used is making sure that we're reading the notes correctly. And to make sure we're reading the notes correctly, we need to make sure we're looking at the right clefs. In a string quartet, We've got two violins, which are nice and easy. Violins play in treble clef. We like treble clef. We just use face and space and every good boy deserves fun and we can work those notes out, no problem. We've had some practice now using bass clef. We know everything just shifts down by a line or a space. Um, the one that's gonna trip us up here is the viola, which plays in this little chappy here, which is called an alto clef. Now, you guys don't actually need to know how to read alto clef. You just need to be aware that it's a thing. So I'm not gonna try and teach you how to read alto clef now. For anyone who is particularly interested in how we do it, um, the line where these two curves converge, so that middle line there, that would be B in the treble clef, that is our middle C. So you can work from there to try and work out what these notes are. So if we could just go up C, D, E, F, G, this first note's an A. Again, you don't have to know that. You don't have to be able to read an alto clef. So I'm going to do you a quick cheat here, and I'm going to tell you what the notes of the first two bars in this piece are, and you're going to write them on your scores. So the viola part there, your notes for the first two bars are A, B, B again, just an octave lower, E, E, A, B, B, E. Can you please write those on your scores using a sharp pencil? Make sure it's accurate. And we now need to work out what the rest of the notes are. We are only going to look at the first two bars for now. Okay, so your next task, and I'm going to give you a few minutes to do this because I know some people are a bit quicker than others at working out notes, especially in the bass clef. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to fill in the rest of the notes. So all of the notes for violin one up to here, violin two up to here as well, and for the cello just up to here. If you do finish that quickly, if you're one of those people who's quite quick at reading notes, then I want you to carry on trying to fill in the viola notes. So practice reading that alto clef and see how you get on. Okay, see if you can fill in the rest of the line, see if you can go even further. I'm gonna give you a few moments to do that, like I said, make sure you're all caught up. Again, year nine, you shouldn't need to talk about this one. I want everyone to at least give it a good go on their own. If you really, really are struggling, then you can turn to the person next to you and ask for a little bit of help, but give it a good go on your own first.
don't forget your key signature. We've got two sharps in that key signature. So every time we come across an F, it's an F sharp. Every time we come across a C, it's a C sharp. That's important. We've got to get that right. Just a couple more minutes now, year nine, to complete that. If you have finished, like I said, see if you can do some more in the alto clef. If the alto clef's a bit too much of a challenge, practice the bass clef and carry on reading that. Just one minute left. Okay, that's all the time I want to give you on that one. If it's not been quite enough time again, I'll ask your teacher to just do a quick pause there, but hopefully we're ready to move on. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to correct this in green pen. I just want you to use your rubber and your pencil to make any corrections, because otherwise we end up with a very messy score. So violin one. We start on an F sharp, and that F sharp, is held all the way into that one. That's the reason I haven't written F sharp again is because it's the same note, it's just tied over. And then B, G, I'm not going to label the grace notes because they're not important to the harmony. So F sharp, B, G, E, D, C sharp, D, C sharp, A. And that is the first couple of bars in violin one. Let's look at violin two, the other one that's wonderfully written in treble clef for us. And this one doesn't even use any ledger lines. So, and in fact, there's three notes to label here. So we should have got this one. Uh, D, B, A. And again, that first note is tied. So we only label it once. It's the same note because it's being held over. Okay, and moving on to the bass clef, lots of bass clef notes to try and work out here. 
but as I'm sure you quickly realised, all of them are in octave pairs, so you're writing the same note twice each time. So D, D, C sharp, C sharp, B, B, A, A, G, G, G sharp, G sharp, A, A, G, G. Okay, hopefully you got most of that without too much help. I'll leave that on the screen for a moment so you can make your corrections. Okay, so this brings us on to the last bit really that we're going to do today. So I want to know which chords are being used in the first two bars. So here is that first two bars and I've sectioned them off for you. There are four chords being used. Each colour that I've used to section them off represents a chord change. So everything that's in the blue uses one chord, the yellow is a chord change. So I wanna know, is that the first, the second, the third? You need to go back to your chord bank to try and work it out. Now, it seems straightforward, but it's not, because in music we use a lot of passing notes, which are notes that actually aren't in the chords that we're using. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so not, all of the notes that are circled off there are going to be a part of the chord. They might be passing notes or they might be additions to the chord. Like, I don't know if maybe you've seen sometimes we write chords like 5 7, which is the fifth triad plus the seventh note in the scale as well. I'm not going to worry about that for now. I just want you, and this time you can work with people around you to decide which chord you think it is most likely is being used in each of those sectioned off areas. So this yellow section here, remember that that F sharp there is being held through. So there's an F sharp there and a D there. Okay, I don't think that appears any other times. And remember, we kind of ignore the grace notes we'll just let them go because um, they're not important to the harmony. So you need to try and work out, once you've decided which notes are being used within each section, which chord it is most likely to be. Now I'm gonna give you quite a bit of time on this because it should take a little bit of arguing out. Um, and yeah, work with the people around you, use your, your chord banks, and I will check back in with you in around six minutes. Go for it. So it's your job to try and identify which triad from your chord bank is being used each time. Is it the first, the second, the third? There will be notes that don't belong to the triad, so you've got to try and work out which is most likely.
Okay, you've had about half your allotted time on that one, so I hope you're making some decisions. If you think you have done that, then I want you to look at the next sort of half a bar. So this bit here and see if you can decide which chord is being used there as well. But you've only got one minute remaining. Okay, year nine, that's all the time I want to give on that one. Again, if I haven't given you enough time and you need a little bit more as a whole group, then I'll ask your teacher to pause there, but hopefully most of you have managed to make some decisions. I'm going to give you your answers, and I'm going to give you these answers in the form of Roman numerals. We use Roman numerals to represent the chords being used in music a lot, so I want you to start getting used to this. Here we go. In the blue, we have chord one. So in the key of D major, chord one is D, F sharp, and A. So we've got D there, we've got F sharp there, we've got A there, and we've got two Ds, and then the passing notes, the red herrings in this chord, were those two C sharps. So well done if you got that one right. Um, can you now please label on your scores in Roman numerals, so the same way that I've done here, so you represent chord one with an I, and use a capital I, so label your scores that that is chord one. The next one being used is chord six. Now this time you'll notice my Roman numerals are in fact lowercase. So instead of using a capital V and a capital I, I've used a lowercase V and I. And that is because, again, when we're talking about harmony in music and we use these Roman numerals, um, we use capitals when the chord is a major chord and we use lowercase when it's a minor chord. And we know that chord six in any major key is always going to be a minor chord. So six will always be written as a lowercase Roman numeral. So let's just check it. So in our chord bank, we should be in, uh, where are we? D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. So we're looking for B, which we have in the viola line. Uh, we've also got two Bs down here, so that's good. So B, D, and F sharp, B. There's the D being held in violin two and the F sharp being held in violin one. Uh, so 
we've got a red herring of an A there at the end of the continuo part, but we're good. Okay, so the next chord being used is in fact chord four. You can see we've gone back to capitals, as should you, as you label your part now with chord four there. Okay, so going back to our chord bank, the fourth, so we've got D, E, F sharp, A, a, stop there. Okay, so we need to try and find somewhere where the A is being used. Oh, I've done that wrong. <laughs> D, E, F sharp, G. Sorry guys, my deep apologies. We're looking for G. I was just looking at that thinking that makes absolutely no sense what I've just said. Right, so we're looking for a G. There is the G in the bass line. Um, let's have a little look what else we've got. So we need a G, we need a B, there's a B right there, and actually another G there as well, so that's good. Um, what have we got down here? We've got uh, a B here as well. So G, B, and D, that wraps off our chord, so that one was nice and clear. That was chord four. Now, all of this last little bit is... Chord five, well done if you got it right. Don't worry if you didn't get it right. We will have some more practice on this. Um, so chord five, this one is in fact A. That's what we're looking for here. So A, C sharps and E's, that should be what give it away for us here. So anywhere where we can see an A, there's an A in the bass part. Quite often the bass is a good place to look for the root, so the first note of the triad. So there's an A in the bass, uh, there's an A there in violin two as well, there's an A in violin one, A, C sharp, where can we see C sharp? There's a C sharp there, there's another one there in violin one. Um, what have we got down here? These are E's. Okay, so we've got some E's there as well. And there's an E at the beginning in violin one. So A, C sharp and E. That was definitely the hardest one to do because there were quite a few red herrings in that one. We don't use the D. Um, we don't use the B, nor the G sharp. So there were quite a few there that didn't apply to that chord. But overall, the notes being used there were the notes of the fifth triad in D major. So what we will now be calling chord five. All right. Really, really well done today, guys. That was a lot of new learning without me in the room. I hope it went okay. I'm sure you'll have some questions about it and I will be back next week to answer any of those questions that you have. Um, if you still have some time left now, then I would like you to use this time to quiz each other on things that you have done so far this term. So I want you to be asking each other lots of questions about Baroque classical and romantic music. I want you to be talking about the way dynamics were used in each era. I want you to be talking about the way um, instruments were used, the changes in the orchestra. I want you to be giving examples of composers from each era. And then I want you to also be talking about the textures and the melody, which is some of the newest stuff we've done. So remember, we've done Baroque textures and melody in particular. So I want you to be quizzing each other on all of that, as well as talking to each other about how note reading, you can go through your scores and try and label up the rest of your notes. Make sure you use any extra time that you have now productively. So if you know you need to practice note reading, then go through your scores and start labeling those notes. If you know you've forgotten everything that we ever did about the classical era, then talk to the person next to you about classical music. If you know that you are already quite good at most of this note reading, but you've never really looked at alto clef before, then spend this time filling in the rest of the notes in the alto clef. It's really, really good practice. Okay, well done, guys. I will see you really soon, I hope. Um, yeah, all the best.